Hey guys, this is the tour of the Keystone Springdale uh, 1760BH. Uh, we just want to give you a little quick rundown of some of the systems so that you can reference when you're out in the field camping if you have any questions and look, take a chance to uh, just look over them for your trip. I uh, apologize for the audio. We do live pretty close to the highway. Uh, so I'll try to make this quick, try to show you a lot of it. Uh, you probably won't see me of me. Won't see much of me. I'm uh, pretty sweaty. You know, we live in Texas. It's summertime. So uh, let's get into it. First things first, uh, we'll just do a quick walk around before we get into anything up here at the front of the camper. If you've used a camper before, you know this is typically where your batteries and your propane tanks are. Um, here on this model, we have one 20 pound propane tank, which also means if you were gonna be out a while and you wanted to uh, bring your own from your barbecue grill or whatever and not have to worry about running out of propane when you were out there, it would slide right in there super easy. We have one that'll always come full and ready to go for you. Um, and one battery right there. We have all the tow equipment that we'll go over later. There's a pass-through storage um, on either side of the front. We'll kind of get into that a little more later. Clip to hold the door up. Do you have a 110 outlet there on the front? You can get a good view of that. This is the exhaust for your furnace. Okay, so if you're using the furnace, if this is in the winter time and you're watching this video, you don't wanna put anything close to this. It says do not block because this does get hot. So you don't wanna set a camp chair right up against there because it does get hot. It's the way it comes from the manufacturer. So just be aware of that. Um, see, let's go right here. So as you'll see here is these leveling blocks. Um, when you get to your campsite, I'll include these leveling blocks. Um, and I'll show you how to use them, but that's how you're gonna just take the low side of your camper, bring it up, make it a little higher, uh, because everything feels better <laughs> when the camper is level. Um, and some of the systems, like the refrigerator and the slide, really like it to be level. Uh, if for any reason you needed a spare tire on the road, if roadside assistance would need your spare tire, there it is. Coming over here, here is gonna be your fresh water connections. Um, so you have your city water connection here if you've ever used a camper at a campground uh, and you have You connect to the city water. Uh, that's where it'll connect in right there And then filling the fresh tank is right there. I believe it holds about 30 gallons And also here is your power that comes out of here and we'll go over power a little bit more in a little bit the slide And the other side of your pass-through Okay, um, going over the front of the camper, uh, if you've ever hooked up a trailer, you know what's going on here. We have a hitch ball. Uh, this lock will stay on there whenever you're not connected. Um, we'll send that with you. Um, you have your safety chains. Um, seven way uh, lights, excuse me, five way, wait, seven way. <laughs> seven way lights, uh, trailer brakes if, if your vehicle is equipped, um, along with this breakaway, which is very important, you'll hook that up, and I'll show you what to do with that, but you'll hook that up right where one of your safety chains goes, and this just means if for any reason your vehicle were to come, uh, your the trailer were to come dislodged from your vehicle, um, this would come out, pull out up here, and it would engage the trailer brakes and bring the vehicle to a stop. So I keep that right there. It's connected, so I don't forget. Stabilizer jacks. Stabilizer jacks are just that. They are for stabilizing, they're not for leveling. So we don't ever wanna to try to lift the camper with these. This is just a footprint to go on the ground to take some of that movement out of the camper as you're moving around. And so um, you do your leveling side to side with the leveling blocks like we talked about, and you're leveling front to back with the jack on the front of the trailer. These are not for leveling. So you should be perfectly level before you ever touch these. Uh, you'll take your wrench, include it in the front pass-through, and we'll crank it down. Uh, a lot of people will connect a drill and a socket attachment to these, which is fine as well. Uh, if you want to bring that, that's fine. Um, but it's just as easy to do this. It's not that big of a deal. It takes a few seconds per jack to just let it down. Uh, the other thing with the drill is if you have it set too high, you can actually damage these and strip the, the little cotter pin out of there uh, because they are not meant to lift much weight. This is not like the scissor jack uh, for you know changing the tire in your car. So I'm at the bottom here, still haven't quite touched, but I've now touched the bottom. Now all I'm gonna do is just barely give it a little bit. 
if I see the camper rise at all, then I know I've gone too far. I need to back off, set it down, and just give it a quarter turn, and that's it. All right, moving on to your front pass-through storage. It is lockable. It comes with the keys. Um, match it up here. Um, in here is most everything you'll need for outside, a little bit for inside, so we have your two camping chairs. Um, I have included a level, because I like the big level on the floor in the camper, just to double check level. An outdoor mat for setting up camp under your awning when you get there. Uh, here is just some extra toilet paper, um, some extra chemicals for the black tank. Again, extra, everything else uh, will be in the uh, bathroom and then here's your fire starters. Uh, I do include these if you want to have a campfire your fire starters and moving on to the other side Here we have Water hoses and that's where or the water hose excuse me again with your water regulator. This is what's going to regulate the PSI uh, some campgrounds have really uh, high pressure water that can actually damage things inside of the vehicle so we always want to keep this regulator on here um, and then you have your power adapters this is a 30 to 50 amp in case you needed to plug into a 50 amp connection that's that adapter there's also a 30 to 15 amp uh, that's currently hooked up right now that i'll show you when we get around so there black and gray tank connections Here's your hose, it's a really nice hose, really solid. Um, just folds up real nice in here. All right, so we've got a couple pieces of gear here. Uh, obviously we're plugged in at home right now. If you're at the campground, you'd have a stand box that would probably have 30, 50, or 15 amp, uh, most of the time 30 and 50, sometimes 15 amp uh, connections. Um, this is a 30 amp camper. Um, so I'm plugged into a 15 amp connection right now. So I have my 30 to 15 connect, uh, adapter here. So I'll start by plugging that into here. You probably won't need to use this, so just imagine that as the stand box uh, at your campsite. And then a very important piece of gear here is this. This is a surge protector. And it'll also tell you if anything is wrong with the power at your campsite. Um, so you can see there that uh, it's got all these, when, whenever these lights light up in certain codes, you'll be able to tell if something's wrong. Um, these two, the second and third light on, um, as you can see right here, power on, correct wiring, everything's good. Um, so that's what you want to look for. And so we'll plug that in to there. Then our camper power, which came out of the back, right into here. And when we plug that in, I don't know if you'll be able to see that. This, the, the last light is a little dim, but it is on. Uh, you can see both lights are on. We're good to go. Now, if you plug into a 15 amp connection for some reason, your standard household three prong, um, it is going to be very difficult to run the air conditioning. Um, it probably will trip the breaker and you'll have lots of problems. So I don't recommend doing this. This is just so I can charge the batteries at home and uh, you know run a few plugs, things like that when I'm doing maintenance to the camper. Um, this is not for like staying in the camper. You really wanna have that 30 amp connection that looks like that. That's what you wanna be plugging into whenever you're camping. So this camper, along with most modern campers today, is equipped with the Sure Step or the Solid Step system. Solid Step system is much nicer. One thing you wanna make sure, and you can see I've already given it a little love tap there. You wanna make sure this door is all the way open as far as it'll go, because when this comes out, it's only got a tiny little bit of clearance there. Now, this goes either way, left or right, doesn't matter, either way works. What you wanna do is pull that, and then hold on to it, because it is gonna give you some weight. Lay it out. These legs do come out, or in, depending on uh, your campground, uh, just to make it level, so you can adjust them independently, and then that's good to go. Looking at the control panel here, um, we have your light switches. This will be the lights for inside. All of them together. And then this is going to be the light for your awning, which I'll show you later. So we've got lights on inside. Okay, so I currently have the slide in, as you can see. We're just going to come over to our control panel. We're going to hold slide out and hold down. 
keep holding and it's gonna do its thing. Now there's two motors in this slide, uh, one for the left and one for the right. So what you wanna make sure you do is once you get to the end and it stops moving, keep holding down until it's been quiet for like three seconds and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm still holding, it's almost there. One, two, three. Okay, so the reason you do that is because those two motors in the bottom, um, sometimes they'll get you know an inch off here, an inch off there, and once you get it all the way to the end, those motors then make sure, oh, this one's a little farther out, so it'll push it a little farther. If you let go as soon as it stops, then it'll be off a little bit, and when you go to pull it in, you'll be pulling it in off kilter, and then it won't fully seal up against the camper, and then the next time you push it out, it goes a little more, and the next time a little more. So every time you hold down that button as it stops, those motors are, are centering themselves and making sure they're the same. So make sure you hold that down. They will stop on their own. You're not gonna burn anything up by holding the switch down. Same thing when you come in, hold it down all the way until it stops, you'll hear them leveling, and then count one, two, three, let go. Um, I don't have space right here at my house to let the awning all the way out. Um, but I will show you uh, basically how you do that, which is awning extend and awning retract. You'll just hold it down and you can see it's doing its thing there, coming all the way out. And then awning retract, we'll bring it back in. Important to remember, make sure you have the door out of the way of the awning <laughs> when you open it. I was paying attention to making the video and I left the door out and it was stopping the awning for some reason and I was saying, what the crap? Well. Make sure it's out. Um, you might damage something, luckily I didn't. Make sure that the door is not all the way open like when you pulled out the steps. Make sure it's just somewhere in that range. The door does have a shock in it, so it's not gonna like fly around. It's totally fine to leave the door open like that. But yeah, make sure it's out of the way of the awning. And you can see here that second light, as I flip it on, is your light bar or light strip. Okay, moving inside, uh, what you're seeing here is the bed with uh, that full bedding package. If you didn't purchase the full bedding package, um, then yours will just come with the fitted sheet on here, uh, which actually isn't on here. We still have it set up for pictures. <laughs> um, but this would be the full bedding package with the comforter, the flat sheet, the pillow cases. Remember, you'll need to bring your own pillows. Uh, nobody wants to sleep on somebody else's pillow, so we just tell people bring your own pillows. That seems like the most hygienic way to do things. Um, there is a shelf up top uh, where you can store just some simple things. You don't really want to drive with anything up here. These are Velcroed down, so don't worry about my little baby tree. Here's your TV. Um, the remote is located right here, which that is your vertical storage. And for the, uh, for the TV, I mean, it's super simple to use. Um, we do have over-the-air cable, so you want to make sure that right there is turned on. And then it'll just come on and you can move through whatever channels are ready and available in your area. Um, there is an included, we'll mute here. There is an included uh, HDMI cable. Um, so you can plug in your, your computer um, or whatever device you want to plug in there uh, to use that while you're out. And you'll just press the input button here. And that'll take you to HDMI 1 and you'll select it. Okay, so we've got the dinette stowed away here. This is how you want to drive. Uh, you never want to tow the camper with the dinette in the full upright position um, for eating uh, because it's not the most stable thing in the world if you've ever been inside an RV with one of these style uh, dinettes. Uh, they can come off and if they come off, they're basically like a wrecking ball inside of your camper. You never want that. It is heavy, so we don't want that. Um, I, it's very simple, so I'm not going to show you how to do it, but there's two poles that go in there. This comes out and it lifts up and sets up for a dining surface for you. This is also a sleeping area. You just take these cushions on the backs, put them in the center, and voila, sleeping area. You also have some storage underneath. Okay, moving around to the kitchen. Um, so, we have your sink, stove top, there's no oven in this model. Um, the stove top, we do include a lighter because it doesn't have an igniter. Uh, so when your propane is on in the front, um, you'll just turn it on and light it with your lighter which is located here with the rest of your utensils. We've got all your basic utensils um, that you need out. Uh, and a set of knives, as well as your plasticware. Trash can, 
trash bags. Please remove any trash after you're done with your trip. Sink. Up top, we have all your uh, pots and pans, and there's the French press. Uh, we have included a set of four coffee cups, a travel mug, basic seasonings, there's even some Tupperware back there, and paper towels right up front. Microwave, uh, I won't turn it on right now. Hey, you can see me and my sweaty self. <laughs> Fridge, which is not on right now, but will be on for your trip when you come to pick up. Great size fridge and freezer. Up here on the fridge controls, you have on and off. I have it off right now. Um, if I turn it on, it will run. I'll show you. And right now it's on auto, which means it's going to default to electric. So if this switch is pushed in, it'll be on auto, and that means it's going to default to electric. And if for any reason it can't find electricity, you've unplugged it or whatever, or the power goes out, it will automatically switch over to gas if it's on and connected. Or if you want to specifically run it on gas, you can turn it to there, and it will attempt to run on gas. Right now the gas is off, so it's not going to work. I'm going to turn it back on auto and off. For any, if any reason that check light comes on, just turn it off and then back on again. Typically that check light would be, uh, it tried to run on gas, but it didn't ignite, and you just need to turn it off and back on again. Which also goes for the water heater. So this is your control panel. Let's see if we can focus. This is your control panel. You can see right here you have water heater. So we'll turn that on. Um, see DSI fault, so that came on. That meant it was trying to light. That is now lit and it's running. Uh, if for any reason you see that light come on, oh, just like that right there, see the propane's off. Um, that just means you need to turn it off and turn it back on again and it will try to light itself. Right now the propane's off so it's not gonna work. Water pump, if you are running on uh, the water tank instead of city water connection, then you'll need to run this water pump. If you're connected to the city water connection, do not run this pump. You don't need it. I don't know that it would break anything, but it probably won't, but it's just not necessary and it's extra wear and tear on it um, because your city water is gonna give you the pressure. Uh, if you're going out of the tank, then you'll just turn that water pump on. Battery, so right now the battery is at three quarter percent. We're plugged in. Fresh water tank is empty. Black tank is empty. Gray tank is empty. Um, you'll wanna watch these. Uh, if you're only doing a two night uh, weekend trip, two night, three night weekend trip, your black tank probably won't fill up. Just be conscious of how much you put in there. The gray tank, you really wanna be watching. You don't wanna overflow your gray tank. Um, the first thing it's gonna do is, if you're overflowing your gray tank because you're washing dishes, it's gonna come up in the tub and then overflow and nobody's having a good day then. So you wanna make sure, uh, just kinda of keep an eye on that. Make sure that you're not running it up too high. Once it gets to two thirds, you want to kind of keep an eye on it and then full, obviously you want to dump. Uh, for the winter time, this is your thermostat uh, for your heater. This does not run anything with the AC, um, but for the heater, um, you have your thermometer on the bottom and then it's just like anything else. So you'll feel it kind of snap in right there. That means it's off. And then anything else, it'll just set to there. Here, here is your AC. Uh, it is just centralized here. So it's just right in the middle, it's a very small camper, so you don't need anything but that. These side vents are return vents, and this is your out vent. If you wanted to block it up, you could block it up, which would just blow it out of the other side, or open it up. Um, it works really well in this little camper. Uh, this is your thermostat, so it doesn't have temperature control, but uh, the good thing about this is, if you set it somewhere, you know, like moderate, let's say that was about 75, 74 degrees, um, what you'll do is, you'll, and I will turn it on, I won't run it forever because I'm only on the 110 connection. Um, you get your fan, high fan, you might not be able to hear me after this, but we'll go to these cool settings, low cool and high cool. So what that's gonna do is, a high cool is you get in, you turn it on, you know, it's a hot day, you're gonna blast the camper full and get it cooled off as soon as possible and then go to low cool. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna keep the fan on all the time, so it's not gonna be waking you up in the middle of the night, kicking on and off like a lot of people complain about. It's just gonna stay on all the time, and then it's just gonna kick the AC compressor on and off based on where you put this thermostat. So if you put it in the middle, you'll, you'll be able to hear just the tiniest little click of click, just like your car. Oh, there it comes, you know, the cool's coming back on, and then when it's cooled off enough, that compressor will kick off, but the fan will stay going, which I really like about this. All right, bathroom is going to be a little hard to get on camera just because it's small, and I don't have a wide angle lens. 
Um, we have set up this nice towel rack. So the towels are included. Uh, there's four. You don't have to worry about bringing them if you want more like beach towels um, for outings. Then you'll need to bring those. But as far as towels for inside the camper, um, you can just depend on these right here. And you can hang other things on that rack as well. We have hand towel along with your uh, mirror medicine cabinet. Uh, pedestal sink, well, it's not a pedestal sink, it's a sink, and your toilet, and shower. A um, little light light there, you do have power in the bathroom. This is a GFI plug, so if it looks like that, it's not running. So you can tell, no power. So if you've ever used a GFI, just set it. That should happen anytime you unplug the camper, it should trip, and then you'll have power. Also, this is a GFI as well. So if you notice this is not working in the kitchen, go back to the bathroom and check the bathroom and make sure that GFI is on. Okay, if you've never used an RV toilet, here is your lesson. Uh, there's a foot switch over here on the right side. And when you push it, I don't have the water connected. You can see a little water left in the tank. It'll be much faster than that. Uh, it'll rush in. Uh, if you're gonna go number one, just push it. You should be good, the water will run through. Uh, if you're gonna go number two, uh, you'll want to do a half press and that'll start running water in. You see the door's not open yet. It'll fill up. You'll want to do your business <laughs> and then come in, run some more water and go ahead and push it all the way down. And then you can run a another tank of water and push it all the way down again. That just keeps things from smelling, makes everything uh, work nice and clean. Okay, one more thing about the bathroom. Well, two more things. Uh, this light just has a little button. And this vent, um, if you run the fan without opening the vent, it doesn't do anything. So, this, as long as it's not raining, go ahead and crack that vent open. There we go. Turn on your fan and it's wonderful. It's also really good um, if you first get in the camper, maybe you wanna just open this vent and just kind of vent it out, let some of the hot air out after you've been traveling. That's a great way to do that. Just always, always, always make sure to close that before Basically every night because you never know when rain's going to come, but especially before you start moving, before you tow the camper, make sure that that vent is closed. You wouldn't want the wind to catch it and rip it off or for any moisture to get in. All right, coming down from the bathroom right here below your bunks. This is important. Uh, if for any reason there are any issues, we're in contact or you're in contact with roadside assistance, or not roadside assistance, but um, outdoorsies, um, technical support or anything like that, and you need to access the breaker box, it is right here. You just push in the middle, and there are your fuses and your breakers. As you can see, everything's good. If you hear that little fan running, nothing's wrong. Uh, it's just a fan, just like would be in your computer or anything else to keep things cool. Uh, but there is your fuses and breakers, and you'll just lift it up and just click. Your bunks. Um, so these bunks, you're seeing them right now with just the fitted sheets. They do come with flat sheets and pillowcases. Um, each one has its own individual light here. Um, this top bunk is rated for 300 pounds. Um, I've never gotten up on it. I just haven't wanted to chance it. Um, but it is rated for 300 pounds. Uh, sh everything should be good um, for that. For an adult, um, it's basically the size of a camp, a camp bed. So it's 30 by 75. The size, uh, a little bit bigger than a cot. Um, so an adult definitely can sleep in here, but kids are a little more comfortable. All right, all of the windows, uh, pretty much every window opens. Uh, they do all have the dark shades as well, which are great. So important thing to remember, if you are leaving the camper for any time, if it's 30 minutes, if it's three hours, if it's all day, if it's overnight, you'll want to retract the awning. You never, never, never know when strong wind is going to come up. Um, and even just 15 or 20 mile an hour winds can just wreck these awnings. They're just not built to withstand it. They're meant to be folded in when you do that. So you always want to make sure that before you leave, you roll in your awning. And so we'll just awning retract until she gets all the way in. All the way in. And that's it. Okay, one more thing about the stairs. You do, like I said, want to have the door all the way open when you're moving the stairs. Uh, to put the stairs up, there is a design flaw, which is this little channel right here tends to hold dirt. So I just put it up on my knee, and kind of try to brush some of that out so it doesn't get inside the camper. 
push down my steps. Just kind of clean it off as best I can before I flip it in there. And then, you want to make sure that you miss that screen door right there. And the best way to put this up, which is kind of hard with two hands, with one hand, is that rather than just pushing it in, go ahead and just turn the handle, set it in, and then let it go. Make sure it's in there. Um, if you go slamming it in there, you're gonna bend this. It's very thin metal, so you don't wanna do that. Uh, just turn it, put it in, let it go, and you should be good to go. Okay, so real quick, I'm gonna go through uh, dumping your tanks. If you have a full hookup site, um, you'll just, it, it's best to just go ahead and hook this up when you're setting up, that way you don't have to do it all when you leave. And if you have to dump while you are at your campsite, if your tanks are full, then you're really good to go. If you are doing this at a dump station, it'll be the same process. Uh, here's your hose, it looks small. Uh, it's actually really long. Um, and that will connect right here. This is at the back of the camper behind the tire. I'll make this quick. Um, this is your black tank. This is your gray tank. Uh, black tank comes out, gray tank comes out. Um, you'll take this cap off. Snap that on there the same way. That's your hose. Uh, you always want to start with your black tank because your gray tank is what's going to flush out your hose. So you pull your black tank all the way out. Um, you'll hear it start to come down the hose and um, and out. And then on this end, you'll find your elbow. Um, most dump stations are just a hole in the ground. You'll just stick that in the ground. Uh, but if you have full hookup sites, sometimes they'll have threads that you'll be able to thread that into. So once your black tank is done, you hear it has stopped running, you look in the elbow and it's not running anymore, you'll go ahead and shut that valve and head inside. Okay, moving back inside, what you wanna do is after you've completely emptied your black tank, uh, you wanna come back over to your foot pedestal. And like I said, I don't have it hooked up to water right now so you won't see any water coming out. Um, but you'll wanna pump um, probably about two to three gallons of water into there and uh, just kinda, you know, until it's about two to three gallons and then let it go and you can replace this and then we'll head back outside okay now that you've put about uh, a few gallons of water into your black tank um, you'll come back out here pull the black tank flush the rest of that out uh, once that's done shut it that's when you'll pull your gray tank and let your gray tank flow all the way out it will typically be fuller than your black tank because you're using more gray water than black water and once that's done you'll shut it off um, kind of lift your hose, kind of make sure that everything's out of it until everything is out of your elbow, and then take this off, replace your cap, make sure both of your valves are all the way shut, and you're good to go. Hey guys, I uh, hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, feel, feel, feel free to message us through the platform um, and or, or shoot us a text, and we'd be happy to help you with anything. I hope this video helps. Hope you have a wonderful trip. See you next time.